Hello and welcome. Uh, today we'll be texturing this game asset. It's a, a gas can, as you can see. And we'll be using Philogic's PBR uh, texturing add on. Uh, it's a really cool add on, and any, if anyone has used uh, Substance Painter, uh, he or she will feel at home uh, when using it. Uh, this will be uh, the final result uh, that we'll be uh, trying to achieve. So let's get started. Uh, you can download this uh, model from the link uh, in the description. Uh, so uh, first you need to install your uh, add-on and once you do you'll get a um, tab in the end panel and once you uh, select your model you can then uh, create the material for it first you need to create a shader for this object for that you can press this uh, button which says new pix shader and you have two options uh, for the pbr for one is metallic and the second is specular so i'll choose metallic for this uh, for the second step you need to bake uh, the maps uh, for the textures to work on so i'll create three maps one for normal ambient occlusion and curvature you can enable these by clicking on them and once you do you can then uh, select uh, the options i'll keep the quality at 8 and margin at 16 pixels and i'll use a 1k texture so once I press uh, baking, uh, it'll start uh, the baking process. And since this is going to take some time, I'm going to speed up the uh, video here. Okay, the baking process has uh, finished. Now I want uh, this can to have two colors. So from here to the top, I want it to be a yellowish orange color and towards the bottom, I, I want it to be a, a dull greenish color. So let's create our first uh, material. I'm going to create two materials, uh, one for the yellow paint and the other for the green paint. Now, once you add a smart material, you have uh, different channels. Uh, this is the base color, metallic, uh, roughness, height, normal, and the layer mask. Uh, base, uh, since this is a smart material, you won't be able to uh, edit the other uh, layers uh, apart from the base and the layer mask. Uh, you can uh, uh, we have changed the parameters that are provided by each smart material uh, over here. So let's go to the base color and by pressing this green button you have uh, uh, options. Uh, you have an option to add uh, some pre-built smart materials. I'm going to go with uh, paint. Uh, this is called steel painted scratch. Uh, so once I do, I get some uh, parameters which I can tweak. So I want it to be a dull yellowish orange color. So let's change the color. Uh, let's reduce the metallic uh, parameter and let's increase the roughness. And let's keep the scratches to about 0.8 okay so now we need to mask the uh, bottom part of uh, the model to show the green paint and uh, let's go to the layer mask tab and let's add a new image uh, go to the bottom and let's create a new image and create a 
white image white will uh, show all the paint and then we can paint it black to uh, mask out the areas that we don't want to show press ok move to the paint panel and let's paint our mask I'm going to select a line type stroke and keep the fall off to constant while drawing the stroke we can press alternate uh, to uh, draw a straight line We can now paint over all the other paths to uh, hide the paint from there. So, uh, restore the stroke type to space. Since we are going to show the rust uh, beneath the paint, so uh, majority of the edges will uh, be shown as worn out so let's uh, finish the paint and in the paint layers add a new paint layer this is our yellow paint uh, this will be our green paint let's move it below the yellow paint And in the base layer, let's add a another uh, steel paint material. And let's reduce the me metallic values. Increase the roughness. Keep the scratches to 0.8. And let's now use a dull green color. Uh, there is some leftover paint from the yellow uh, layer. So let's go to that and let's paint over it. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's add a new material layer and name it Rust. And let's now select a Rust Smart Material. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Smart Rust Core. This uh, Smart Material has uh, a couple of settings that we can tweak. So first, uh, the rust is shown on the basis of the AO map that was baked uh, in our first step. Uh, the curvature controls uh, the rust on the basis of the curvature map and the amount of bump that uh, is going to be visible uh, for the paint is uh, controlled by the bump and detail and surface grain controls the amount of uh, rather the detail of the corrosion so let's tweak these settings to get the uh, desired result okay this looks good so I want to have more control over the areas uh, that show rust. So uh, for that, we can go to the layer, ma uh, layer uh, channel of this uh, smart material. And let's add a layer and uh, change the blend type to add. Now this, uh, this layer will show the rest of 
I'll rename it to shoe. And let's create a new image. Let's change the UVs to box. Uh, for the base uh, of the rust layer as well, I'm going to change the UVs to box. Now, since I made the image with all white color, it shows the uh, rust on the whole model. So what I need to do is to go into paint and in the texture paint list, let's fill it with black. And this now uh, shows all the paint that is uh, on the model. Now once I do this, I'm now going to paint over this uh, layer and I want to show the rust to some part of the models. For layer mask, uh, I'm going to use the UVs and uh, let's go to the paint. Let's select a brush uh, from the brush menu and i'm going to choose rough round so this will give me a uh, rough corrosion effect so as you can see that where i'm painting it is eating away at the paint but this is too uh, large so let me decrease the size of the brush Okay, this looks good. Now I want to uh, show the paint to some of the areas where it's uh, it has hidden the paint by default, like uh, below these handles. Okay, so let's add a new layer on top. Let's name it hide and this is going to hide the rust from the areas that i don't want it to show on make the uh, select the blend mode to multiply let's create a new image and let's add a adjustment layer on top it is going to be an invert layer Clip it to the uh, hide layer, and once you do, you can now paint on the hide layer to show paint on areas that you want it to be shown. Uh, or you need to enable paint on this layer. Once you do that, uh, you can see that uh, the layer that I've painted is uh, blurry as compared to the uh, layer generated by the default art material. So we need to increase uh, the sharpness of this layer. So let's now add another adjustment layer. It's going to be a curved layer. And you can now adjust the curve to increase the sharpness. And I only wanted to affect the layer that I've painted, so let's enable clipping. Okay, 
Now, if you want to retain the finer details, you can do that by adding a new layer and then paint the finer details inside of this. But uh, for our purpose, this looks okay. And to match the details, I'm going to uh, change the parameters of the base smart material. Now I want to increase some of the corrosion on the sides and especially on the edges. So let's go to the layer mask and on the show layer, let's enable paint. Now once I paint over these edges, you can see that this is bringing the corrosion back. Okay, this looks good. You can play around with the different paint layers and you can achieve uh, whatever the desired effect you want. But uh, this looks pretty good. Let's now add some uh, smears on the paint. So uh, select the show uh, layer. Go to leakage. Select the leakage brush and uh, use the white color to paint over some of the paint let's add another paint layer uh, this time I'm going to go with a uh, custom material let's name it to dust and in the base let's create a image layer this will be the color of our dust And in the layer mask, let's now create a, a surface layer. Once you do, you can go into the selection, then select Falling Dust. And now you can see that there is a dust layer on top of the model. So this looks good. Uh, once we are done, we can go into the export texture tab. Uh, select the path that you want it to export to. Select the export slots. And you can customize these to your liking. Once you do, uh, you can then press the export button and the textures will be exported. I want these to be exported into in as uh, as PNG. And I'm going to select the resolution to 10 by 4. So and finally we can press the export button. Texture export has finished and we are done with the texturing process. Uh, so this is a really cool add-on. I hope you liked the video and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next one.